We all have the ability to start a crowdfunding campaign, the ability to make a video and share our brilliant idea to the world. And although sometimes that works out pretty great, other times, not so much. And guys, it's finally time to talk about the most successful Kickstarter campaign ever. Well, actually, technically not anymore, but still one of the most popular and successful Kickstarters of all time actually ended up being one of the biggest failures on the website of all time. Every few months for the last several years, we have seen update after update after update, telling us how the coolest cooler has fucked up yet again. Originally part of Kickstarter's infamous projects we love, asking for only $50,000 but getting 26,570% over that target. <laughs> yes. A redesigned bloody cooler of all things seriously pulled in the big bucks over on Kickstarter back in 2014 and over the next several years the whole thing turned into one of the most infamous screw ups in Kickstarter history. The big question is, how? How did something asking for so little by comparison screw it up this much? Well today, now that the story has finally come to an end, I plan to give you all the complete history of this crazy tale once and for all. Hi everybody, I'm Daniel Robertson aka DJ Slope from Slope's Game Room and this is the coolest cooler, Kickstarter's most successful failure. So, it's probably best that we start in the beginning, right? Yep, how did this campaign that would eventually become one of the most funded Kickstarters in history make its start? Well, surprisingly, with a failure. This is the coolest cooler with Blender, music and so much more, released all the way back on November 26, 2013. This insulated box has been called a cooler for over 60 years, but what's it really cooler than? We demand innovation from every other category, but all this box does is two things. Keeps the drinks cold, doesn't let the mayonnaise kill anyone. When I can find the time to get outdoors with my family and friends, I want to make sure we're having as much fun as possible. That's why I decided that Cooler just wasn't cool enough, so I created the coolest. As you can see by the video, everything seems pretty legit. You got a good family-like atmosphere, some rather obvious chilled out indie acoustic royalty free music, a presentable host slash inventor of the product explaining it and showing it off rather well, and best of all, you've actually got the product itself front and center. I've said many times that actually having a prototype included in your high quality video isn't just a nice thing to have, it's an essential thing to have front and center. Otherwise you'll end up like old David Kapler here who claims to have the solution for perpetual energy but forgets to actually explain what that solution is or even just show it off. $30,000 please. Yeah. Anyway, back to this cooler. This Ryan Grepper chap seemed damn reliable and even claims that his own reputation is on the line as he has not only bought a few of his own inventions to market already, but he actually has a website too training people on how to do stuff like this. <laughs> um, fair play? And guys, I had a little look into this bloke and uh, yeah, he actually has apparently 18 patents to his name, 17 are related to the coolest cooler and then there's another one uh, related to some dog chew toy thing, hey, whatever. But regardless, my guess is that he actually has quite a few more patents to his name too. And for all of the other inventions, well, looking up anything to do with Ryan will pretty much bring up cooler related articles, but I did come across his sister's blog and when searching for his name on that blog, I found out that this was one of the inventions. A clip that lifts your bag so that you can get the correct weight before going to an airport. The second invention is this, a paper origami thing that is used so that you can fill it up with water for your dog. And also, there was something called the Shotterpult too. <laughs> Here he is at the Playboy Mansion of all places, showing that off. Yeah. Are these the three patents that he's talking about? Probably. 
However, one interesting point is that on his own website, where he shared his experience on how to deal with patents and how to get them to market for a fee, of course, he did boast one particular invention helped him earn over $100,000. Hmm, which one do you think it was? Or was it just all crap in the hopes that you're going to be signing up to his course for $500? I guess we'll never know, right? Obviously, none of this is really that bad of a thing, I suppose. I'm just trying to paint a picture on Ryan and show that he did at least put some serious money himself into the coolest cooler, or to be more specific on that very lavish one-of-a-kind prototype. However, sadly for him, his goal of only $125,000 only got up to $102,188 by 279 backers. Yep. It failed first time around, but not by a huge margin. And in an interview with Inc.com, he explains his reasoning for coming back for round two. After the first campaign failed, my confidence was pretty low, but we had passionate people who connected with the idea. I knew the first campaign wasn't how I envisioned the coolest to be. Encouragement from our original backers and my own belief in the product made me take another shot. And that's exactly what happened on July 8th, 2014. That's the sound of a cooler coming down off the shelf. It's the sound of imminent fun. So why haven't cooler designs changed in almost 50 years? Boring coolers are boring, break easily, and are a pain to get to and from your destination. I wanted a cooler that was really well built, yet had so much fun built into it that I would look for excuses to get outside and enjoy it. So I created the coolest. When people think of the coolest cooler, this is the version they think of. It's been redesigned and has even more bells and whistles on it. New sites from all over promote the thing back then and only one day later, well to be more specific 36 hours later, the first update was posted. Wow, thank you all so much for rallying behind the coolest. In less than 36 hours we've crossed the funding goal and your coolest will get made. I've got some exciting stretch goals I want to share, but I just didn't imagine I'd have to get them together so soon. As the volume of coolest goes up, so do my options, so please help keep the momentum rolling and share with your fellow fun friends. Thanks, Ryan. And that's exactly what everyone did. Update number two came in the very next day, titled... Just crossed a coolest million. In this update, he obviously thanks backers, but also talks about some of the upcoming stretch goals included. More colors, bigger wheels, and a possible solar charger too. More updates came, getting people to vote on colors, talking about the upgrades to the speakers, upgrades on the battery, and just so many other little things here and there, including updating on the campaign going up the all-time most funded projects on Kickstarter. And on August 27th, backers got update number 10 titled... You did it! which came with a little video from Ryan himself. Hey Coolest Backers, thanks to you, as of right now, The Coolest is now the number one highest Kickstarter project of all time. And I can't thank you enough. At its core, The Coolest is really all about having fun and making memorable experiences with family and friends, and I can't wait for you to share yours. Today, together, we made Coolest History. One last update came two days later, which was one day before the end of the campaign, where Ryan basically said thank you 500 times. He gave details on how to organize shipping, told you how to add an additional battery if you fancy, and basically just letting people know that he will be in contact with them during the process after it ends, which one day later, it obviously did. The coolest cooler, 21st century cooler that's actually cooler. It only needed 50k, but on the 30th of August 2014, it ended on $13,285,226 when 62,642 backers finished this thing, making it the most successful Kickstarter of all time for the time. The expected release date was February 2015, and, well, obviously that didn't happen. Now, to be fair to Ryan, he did actually update backers a fair bit, explaining the upgrades he had made, these um, stupid little 3D printed model things that never even saw the light of day as far as I can tell, and on December the 12th, an update on shipping was finally put forward. Delivery Timelines 
Since we've chosen to upgrade your call list as described above, again at no cost to you, it will change our original delivery estimations. Anyway you slice it, producing this many call lists at this level of upgrade and quality takes time. Especially because all of our suppliers were chosen not simply on cost, but on their proven capability of making quality products at high volume. I had originally forecast a February shipping date based on a smaller production run. You might remember my original goal worked out to only 250 callers, and we ended up at 62,642. And of course that date was before we closed Kickstarter and then decided to do all of these new free upgrades for you. We spent months with all our suppliers. I think I've logged a kabillion air miles. And now that we have committed timelines from our manufacturing partners, we have a better picture of what's possible at this volume and quantity. We now believe we will start shipping Coolist in early summer 2015, probably July. There is still the possibility of shortening this timeline and we may be able to ship some units earlier, but I wanted to give you our best estimates as of now. This honestly wasn't the end of the world. A few people moaned that they wanted it for the summer or for specific gifts for a birthday or whatever. But for the most part, people weren't too upset. You know, for the most part, most people were actually happy. I mean, just listen to old Cynthia here. We should get a stack of business style cards to hand out for folks who want to get a cooler like ours once we get it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh, but uh, Cynthia, how did that work out for you? A lot of people did start to show a bit of concern here, as you would expect. Worried that the delays were partly due to his constant obsession with upgrading the cooler, and for the most part, people just wanted the cooler that they saw in the campaign video. But from the get-go, Ryan was always obsessed with using platforms like Kickstarter as a way to gauge feedback directly from the consumer and to upgrade the product as seen here. It's an exciting platform for any creator because it helps you bring your idea to the stage where you can get immediate feedback and minimize your risk. You're able to place your dream in front of your potential buyers before you're risking all the capital that would traditionally come from setting up production and then looking for a buyer. So it's a great platform for any creator because you not only can confirm that there is a demand, you can also get pre-orders from your supporters and these people who are your future customers to take that revenue, pay for your tooling, and launch your company. Now, if you ask me, even though the upgrades, you know, were cool and some people, you know, did want them, again, if you ask me, this was Ryan just constantly pushing this relatively complex idea into a stupidly complex one, adding everything he can to it until it was and will eventually become way too expensive to make. That cost, according to Ryan, would be $485 when it comes to market, a darn sight lot more than the $185 spent by each backer. In other words, backers were getting quite a nice saving. Finally, an update come in explaining that production will soon start after crazy amounts of other needless upgrades and updates on July 17th. This is when it was announced that next week production will finally begin and the first set of callers will start to ship out on Friday, July 24th. And pre-orders opened up on the company's website too for backers that wanted to get it for friends or for whatever reason wanted to get a second one. And thankfully, with all of this said, the worries were finally over because on the 24th, the first batch left the warehouse. Woohoo! I am so excited. I think this was one of the best run projects to date. Delays? Yes, but all communicated timely and regularly. I backed the first attempt that wasn't funded and couldn't believe that it took off like wildfire on the second attempt. As backer number 77, I'll be keeping my eye out for the delivery truck. Well, Jeff, <laughs> hopefully it's done on a first come first serve basis then buddy, because in fact it was only 3,000 of the coolest coolers that got shipped out on this day out of the 62,000 odds that actually ordered one. Please a round of applause for Mr. Ryan Grepper everybody. Ryan also did a talk about the process at TechFest 2015 where he gave even more callers out to backers who attended. You see, even though smooth talking Ryan was still doing his best to calm backers down, there was a fair bit going on behind the scenes that most people just didn't know about with all of the updates. 
You see, $13 million was just not enough money to ship all of these coolers. And even though plenty of backers had received their cooler, many, many, many more had not. And to make extra money, Ryan basically decided to sell the product on Amazon before backers even got theirs. He did post an update on this, but it's long gone on his channel. However, from the news updates that I could find and Reddit posts, the message was pretty clear. To keep the lights on. And... To make certain that every single backer's coolest can get made and shipped. Basically, they just needed to sell a limited quantity of coolers to make up the money. The problem apparently lies in the factory strikes over in China who were responsible for the motor in the blender, and this delay plus all of the other delays were detailed in an update on November 18th explaining all of this, and the coolest cooler finally being released to the public on Amazon, but still not being available to the heavy majority of the backers who actually put the money down in the first place. They were getting it later than the general public. December rolls around and the factory strikes have been resolved apparently according to Ryan and the production would again start in February 2016. And then of course when February 2016 did eventually come around an update explaining how they'd run out of money completely was posted. They needed more money. They needed a new partner to help save them. A post explained all of this put out with detailed accounts on where the money went after Kickstarter fees, failed pledges, development and people and ops. It turns out that only 7,400,000 was left. And if you're thinking, well, that's still a hell of a lot of money for a campaign only asking for 50,000 in the first place. Well, yes, I actually agree, but the real problem was that this bad boy cost more than that final figure divided by 26 odd thousand backers of course that actually wanted one. It's as simple as that, he charged way too little for a product that cost way too much. He also went on to explain that the 100 angry backers that left one star reviews of the product on Amazon gave it a detrimental effect on demand and that it would hurt the company and in turn hurt the backers in the long run. On March the 2nd, 2016, Ryan tried to calm people down, once again explaining the whole process in a Google Hangout livestream. He confirmed that 20,000 had been shipped and 36,000 are left to ship. Some are in the US of course, but obviously the vast majority of those were foreign backers too, where not one cooler was shipped as far as I can tell. And to complete the order, how much more was needed? Well, let's have a listen. So people are asking, how much money do you need? Don't give us any BS, just tell us. <clears throat> and really, to get the rest of the backer units made will be, so let's see, I guess in a bigger picture, our fundraising goal for this bigger picture raise is around $15 million. $15 million. Yep. A Kickstarter ending on over $13 million uh, with over 62,000 backers couldn't ship out the remaining 36,000 coolest coolers. Uh, yeah, doesn't exactly fill you with confidence, does it? I can see why those investors weren't jumping on board, Ryan. It gets worse. As a backers only update titled The Path Forward comes out on April the 12th, 2016, asking backers that have not got their cooler to put down a further $97 each so that they can get their coolers earlier than those that don't pay $97. <laughs> Obviously, the comment section was not best pleased. This piece of shit had plenty of money to make these. He, like every other idiot who gets rich overnight, doesn't know what to do other than spend. Now, he figures he could suck more money out of his backers because it's only $97. If he couldn't do it for $189, he won't do it for $97 more either. He answers no questions. Shame on anyone who gives this piece of shit more money. I know and pray he is a dead man walking. Ryan, fuck you, you piece of shit. I know and pray you and your family will die a horrible death and I'll be happy knowing my 189 put you to an early grave. <laughs> All right, Anthony, calm down there a little bit, mate. Obviously, this guy didn't want to put down any more money whatsoever. But according to reports, Ryan's own reports, over 10,000 people did. And, well, with this new cash injection of $970,000 at least, production began once again. 
A couple of months later, on June the 28th, it was reported that 10,400 coolest coolers had been shipped to those that spent the extra $97 on top of the $189 that they had originally spent, plus whatever the shipping was in the first place. But hey, at least all of those backers finally got a cooler that for the most part was reviewing well, and was a darn sight lot cheaper than the $499 that they were asking for on Amazon, right? Well... In September, the Amazon price dropped from $499 to $199 and then went back up again to $225 for some reason, which in most cases was actually cheaper than what the backers had paid in the first place. As you can expect, the comment section went ballistic and a crazy amount of complaints came into the Oregon Department of Justice, 315 to be exact, and a proper investigation into this whole mess started to take place. So, how did Ryan deal with all this? Well, he used it to his advantage. Mm, kind of. By basically saying that the new delays were a direct result to the complaints as the company is now having to pay legal fees because of the investigation. Which, if you ask me, is super convenient. From here, Amazon put the price down again to $174, which is now even cheaper than what the backers paid for it. And you could even get a second-hand one from Amazon Warehouse, which were completely fine and with a warranty for less than $100, which some Redditors did, and for the price, they were super happy. Again, guys, this actually isn't a bad product. As we move into February 2017, an update explaining the struggles of the company came out. He had shipped 35 coolers one week and 50 coolers another. He explained how his team was tiny now compared to what it was before, but promised to continue working on getting these coolers out the door now that Amazon have thankfully run out of inventory, so could no longer sell them at the dirt cheap rates that they were doing, which almost made the coolest cooler company go under. But... That wasn't the only thing that happened in February of 2017, was it? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I Dubs TV gave his impression on the cooler. Nauseated by all the money you are making when you took my almost 400 pounds and I received nothing. Ryan, my financial status has changed. I need cash to pay my bills. Please mail me my money back. This is how stupid these morons are. I've emailed them numerous times offering to pay full price. Do these coolers even exist? These coolers actually do exist. I purchased one off of Amazon for $200, roughly the same price that uh, all these kind people back here paid, but uh, I got mine straight away via Amazon Prime. <laughs> you suck, you bit suck. I do love you, man. Thanks for not making Kickstarter videos anymore, by the way. So, moving on. The 20,000 plus backers still with warm unmixed beverages on their picnic trips got another blow handed to them on June of 2017 when an update on that whole Department of Justice thing came out basically stating... As part of the agreement with the DOJ, we have a time frame of three years to ship all remaining backers their coolest rewards. If we don't succeed, we have to provide a settlement for any remaining backers. He also explained that it's unlikely going to be this year, because to ship more callers, they need to sell more callers. My god, this is such a mess. Nine months later, nothing happened except for this update saying that the exact number of callers still to go out was 20,121. Yet, yeah, it doesn't actually seem like much had happened at all in the last nine months, and the company needs a further 2.5 to 3 million dollars more before they can ship out the rest. However, Ryan had a plan, and that plan was a new product, a product that he hints about in this update and a product that we will be seeing very soon. Hey backers, almost four years ago you saw me sit on this hill and ask for your help to build the coolest cooler ever. Well, I'm sending you this video because you believed in this project, and because of your help, the coolest cooler exists. And you're one of the fortunate 40,000 backers who have a coolest in your garage right now. Also, keep your eyes open in the coming month for more emails from us where we'll be sharing the fruits of our labors over a year in the making. Until then, life's better outside, and I hope you're able to make time this summer to get out there with your family and friends, and I hope your coolest cooler 
helps you turn those good times into great memories. If you've got any pictures of your coolest level fun, please share them with us at hashtag coolest cooler or help us out and leave a review and let other people know what a great cooler you've got. Until next month, thanks and talk soon. Before the new product was announced though, the 20,000 remaining backers got even more wound up than they did when Amazon dropped the price lower than what they paid for it in the first place because Pepsi did the same thing too, but worse. Because when you bought Pepsis in the States, you got Pepsi points. If you get 500 points, you can get the Pepsi Coolest Cooler for free. <laughs> anyway, time for that new product, right? The Coolest Vibe. Sure, we made the Coolest Cooler, but let's be clear. There's still times and places where any full-size cooler is just too much cooler for the job. Soft-sided coolers exist in the world as either leaky lunch sacks or their pricey rectangles with the waterproof zipper. We felt like in order to make a coolest level soft-sided cooler, it had to actively help you get outside more often. And when you did, actively help out. Introducing the coolest vibe. Now, by this point, it would be easy, you know, just to crap all over this thing. But just like the coolest cooler, this smaller, cheaper model, according to the site bestcooler.reviews, which honestly sounds like a pretty trustworthy source, well, they honestly have nothing but good things to say about it, comparing it to top soft-shelled coolers on the market, and in some cases, even surpassing them. According to the website, these were being sold at $180 plus shipping, and it was still not enough to save the company because another quarterly update came in and stated that no extra coolers had shipped to backers at all. This bought yet another product to the market, the coolest cooler solar lid, for those two thirds that actually got one, plus anyone else that actually got one cheaper or for free. You can now add even more gimmicks to your coolest cooler. And guys, we've now finally entered 2019 on our little story. Uh, now, when I do these kick scammer videos, I don't like to really cover them until the whole story is finished. It's why I did kick scammer news as a spin off. But uh, yeah. This is the year, 2019, when the whole Coolest Cooler fiasco finally ended. Look guys, for what it's worth, Ryan never set out to scam anyone. He was a guy with a million ideas in his head, plus a few more, that sent him to some rather interesting places. But the big problem in my eyes was that almost all of those ideas ended up right here, inside a cooler that, as he stated from the get-go, was something that hadn't been innovated on pretty much since its release. Ryan's goal was to make the best he or anyone ever could, and sure, to a degree, he accomplished that, but even after it's finished, he couldn't stop upgrading it until way too much of the backer's funds had been spent on creating something that nobody honestly needed. Sure, it got great reviews, but what was the end result? 20,000 people being out of pocket. Ryan, a guy who runs questionable businesses run by reputation, all obviously having to shut down, the business itself shutting down, and the people that did get the incredibly impressive but incredibly heavy coolers all started to realize that their rechargeable batteries no longer charge. <laughs> Ever tried to buy a replacement part for a product from a company that no longer exists? <laughs> Those unfortunate backers that never actually got one in the first place have more of a chance to actually get a coolest cooler. And because of this, you got one incredibly hefty, clunky cooler that might look pretty nice, but no longer does half of what it needs to do. In the end, those 20,000 backers that didn't get the cooler got offered $20 as the company went into bankruptcy. And although they haven't actually received that yet, either from what I can tell in the comments section, if I was a betting man, yeah, I think it's a pretty safe bet to say that they will never receive it. Although he does have until the end of 2020 to somehow find roughly $400,000, which I guess is why they started to sell the remaining stock to consumers at a crazy cheap price. I mean, seriously, guys, I mean, this is a pretty good price. <laughs> Ryan's final parting words on all of this explains that it was because of the Trump administration. Hello Kickstarter Coolest Cooler backers. As you may know, last year the US government imposed 10% tariffs on many products imported from China. Like many small businesses dramatically affected by this situation, we viewed this as a short-term situation where, hopefully, calmer heads would soon prevail. 
However, as of early summer, the trade war continued and the tariff was increased to 25%, which affected our entire coolest product line. It was devastating to our business and I know it was felt by many of you in one way or another as consumers and thousands of small businesses everywhere. Today, I'm sad to report that this has proved to be an insurmountable challenge for Coolist and we are forced to close down operations. And all that is left is a Kickstarter page with over 22,000 comments filled to the brim with people rallying together to try and start legal proceedings against the Coolest Cooler company, which again I doubt will ever go anywhere. And that ladies and gentlemen is the story of one of Kickstarter's most successful campaigns ever. Hey guys, thank you all for checking out the video. It's me here, DJ Slope, the creator of the video. Thank you all so much. Like I said, uh, please do hit that subscribe button and the no notification bell uh, to be notified on when I'm doing more videos like these. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about this particular kick scammer and why I chose to do it in one second. But first, let's give a massive shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace? 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 Yes, it's 2020, no doubt. Everybody's heard of the word Squarespace before. The awesome website building um, website, and well, they are still doing what they do in 2020, quite simply because they are easily one of the best. Take it from someone that has his own website. There's just so many website building websites that claim to be the best. But the reason you continuously hear the word Squarespace so often is because they're pretty much the best at what they do. If you are someone like me, someone that hasn't got a lot of time on their hands, wanting to get out as much content as possible, uh, but you know the importance of actually having a website, Squarespace people is for us. And thanks to me, if you go to squarespace.com forward slash SGR, not only will you get yourself a free trial, you get yourself 10% off. Don't forget to use the code SGR. It's 2020, come on, pull your finger out. It's finally time to get to work on that project that you have been thinking about doing for the longest time. Today is the day to do it. Go to squarespace.com, get your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash SGR and get 10% off the first purchase of a website or domain, and boom, you've just got yourself a brand new website and you've supported Slopes Game Room right here on the channel. Thank you guys so much, however you decide to support me, whether you are literally just viewing the channel or sharing it on social media platforms, uh, whether you are a YouTube member or a Patreon, or whether you are, like I say, a sponsor and helping out the channel. So thank you all so, so much, however it is you decide to support the show. Thank you very, very much. So yeah, like I say, the reason I did this particular kick scammer video, you know, it's not the craziest story or anything like that. It's just, um, you know, I really wanted to dig deep on this particular Kickstarter that so many people knew about. And um, yeah, like I said, I don't think the guy ever uh, went out of his way to actually scam people per se. You know, he just, uh, he, had a, he had an ambitious goal and yeah, it got way out of hand. The long and short of it is, he charged way too little for a product that costs way too much. I mean, that's that's literally what it boils down to, isn't it? But yeah, hey, at least now I've given you the full timeline on everything that's happened with this 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 crazy, crazy, uh, uh, long-winded story. So thank you all so much for viewing. But anyway, like I said, I want to give a big special shout out to the Patreons that support me and the YouTube members as well that support me every single month with an extra big shout out going to... Gary Pinkett, Ryan Burford, Andrew Dalton, Ben Jackson, Jonathan Hayward, Kevin King, Christopher Turnbull, Phil Lowlin, Shadow Dial, That Lost Gamer, The Geeky Dad, Roven Army, Ryan Holtz, Retro to Next Gen, Hawk89, uh, Dino Robertson Dunn, Adam Lefty Taylor, Intrigued Gaming, Tim Labonte, Sobe Quang DX, Tim Lunn, Pixel Star Limited, aka Samuel Victor, Conrad Constantine, Pretendo64, Creamy Elephant, 
Casey Garner, Blitz, Hedgy, King Link Reviews, Arslane, Shadow Dragon, Burite, Jim Knapp, Game Apologist, Chris Applin, Wobbles and Bean, The Wonder Ducks, Ye Old Hamburglar, Dan Petit, Lucas Softail, Ronnie Method, SSWB, Sonix Captor, Jeremy Rodriguez, Nick Ballard, Bram Perez, Marcus King, Emo Cut Tindall, Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Todd Paul Float G, Petty Mew, and Trans Rights. Guys, if you want to support the show, uh, just like all of these people here do, if you want to get your name shouted out, you want to get your name shown, then you know, you got those links down in the description to be able to do just that. Uh, we do um, uh, fortnightly discussions that get re-uploaded onto my second channel, which you guys can actually be a part of. Uh, you can be part of the um, streams that I do, where you join in with voice chat on particular streams that I do. We do movie nights where you can join in with voice chats on those. You get to see videos a week early, which is probably the best perk in my opinion. You get to see what I'm working on. There's just so much going on over on Patreon and YouTube member. Whatever platform you prefer to use, you'll be able to find the links down below in the description. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. And yeah, like I said, this is now DJ Slopes signing out because I've been plugging for too long. And hopefully I'll see you all next time.